Hello, my name is Matt Denton, this is Mantis Hacks, and this is IC Hexapod. It's an interactive robot that I built over 15 years ago, but I've never made a video about how I built it or why I built it. We're going to take a look at what's inside of here, take a closer look at the Hexapod, and hopefully get it working again, because it's been at least 10 years since I last switched it on. Fingers crossed. Now the robot gets its name from the fact that it's got a vision system in the head, hence I C, but it's also I letter I C because it's made from integrated circuits and it's a hexapod. Now I've built many hexapods over the years. In fact, this is the first one I ever built. This is 20 years old now. Uh, the Mantis is the last one that I built and that's nearly 10 years old. At some point, I think I might do a video on the evolution of hexapods, how I got from this one here all the way up to the Mantis. But for now, let's take a closer look at IC Hexapod. I'd been working in the film industry for some time when I built IC, and this was about 2006. And I'd actually just come off of the Harry Potter series and one of the things we built was the large hippogriff and quite often I would puppeteer that when we had visitors around the workshop and I really liked watching the interaction between the visitor and the hippogriff and they would suspend their disbelief until they saw me puppeteering it. So I thought it'd be really nice to build an animatronic creation which didn't require the puppeteer. So I took one of my animatronic hexapods here uh, this one was built about 2005 and then I added this head to it and the head has a pan and tilt mechanism so it can move around but it also has a camera in it, a CCD camera which sends its feed down inside of here where there's a computer and the computer analyzes the images and it looks for faces so it's using face tracking using the OpenCV library. I see even had his own website where he'd upload the photographs that he'd taken. Here's a snapshot from 2010. So I'd kind of had this working for a while, since about 2006, 2007. A friend of mine in the industry called Maria Cork, who came up with the idea for an exhibition of creature effects industry artists. It was called the Monster Mash. It's an exhibition of artwork from the creative talents of the UK creature effects industry. The great thing about the Monster Mash was it spurred me on to make Icy Hexapod look presentable and mounting him on this plinth. Which was good because not long after that I had to take him to the London Science Museum to exhibit him. And then from there I did the Radio 4 Today program, UK viewers will know what that is, and also the Richard and Judy program. Unfortunately Judy was ill that day so Mylene Class took over. Bonus. Not long after that, I had to take him to Dublin to an event called Artbots where he won the People's Choice Award. And following that, I took him to Eindhoven to an event called STRP where Aphex Twin were playing. So kind of an interesting career for a robot. So there's why I built IC Hexapod. So now let's take a look at how I built IC Hexapod, starting with the robot itself. On the top here we have the hex engine and this is a piece of software and hardware that I developed and it runs all of the maths for the legs, it does the inverse kinematics and the gate generation of the legs. So all the servos are plugged in underneath here and that sends the signal and the power to each servo. This is the pan and tilt mechanism for the head. The pan servo is actually back inside the body and there's a linkage that comes through to this mechanism here and the tilt servo sits on top via this linkage mechanism here. On the front face here, we have the CCD camera. This is a pinhole camera over here. An incandescent bulb that sits at the back of this tube, just for show. And then this is actually uh, a camera lens from a digital camera, including the digital zoom mechanism, which I managed to get working, and it zooms in and out as IC focuses on its target. There's also a little blink shutter in the back of that, run by a servo, and a little incandescent bulb 
and it looks really nice when it was working because the zooming in and out would change the uh, magnification of the incandescent bulb. This front face I noticed is being held on by a piece of blue tack. This has clearly fallen off of the show and I've had to blue tack it back in place. You can see the CCD camera much clearer and then uh, of course that uh, camera mechanism and the servo sat on top there. So these two back legs never move from this position, although the front ones and middle ones are able to move. It's a really nice trick because it meant I didn't have to change batteries, I could run him all day long, but people didn't really know how he was powered. But actually there's positive and negative coming up each leg, leg here for the power source, there's a camera feed going back down and then there's a data source coming up from the computer. I just lift this lid off with the hexapod attached. And assumingly, I'm gonna to have to unplug some wires as I do so. Um, oh, no. Everything's still unplugged since the last time I moved it. Well, I hope I can remember where everything goes. So inside, we've got a couple of power cables. That looks like the five volt rail for the servos, and that I think is the 12 volt for the camera and other things. Uh, the other connectors from the hexapod would be a video feed, which I think plugs into the underside of this box. It's composite video, and then that goes into the video converter in the computer. Uh, and then there's a serial cable, which I think plugs in here. Uh, the other things that are coming out of here, there's a there's a ethernet cable that goes out the bottom of this base that I can uh, VNC in via remote terminal to control the computer and very fortunately for me I've written the ethernet address on the inside here, that's handy. Uh, there's also a composite a video cable that comes out so you can plug into a composite monitor, it was that long ago, no HDMI in these days. Uh, there's the power supply here that's running the computer and the hexapod and there's a couple of regulators down here, there's a DC-DC converter, I think that's supplying the 5 volt for the servos and a couple of regulators maybe for the camera. And then right in the bottom of the case, there is a fan down there, which is drawing cool air up through the bottom of this uh, acrylic hemisphere and pushing that uh, warmer air out through those three holes at the back there to keep everything cool. Right, I'm gonna put the hex pod back on top and connect up the cables. Now, I think the most awkward thing to plug in is gonna be this video connector. So where does that go? Uh, that's the... Um, Oh god, oh come on, yep, there we go. Oh, right, I can't actually remember how to turn it on. Now I know the computer has a power on button somewhere underneath of here. Oh, you know what I think it is? I think there's a button hidden inside the case and I have to poke something up through one of the holes. What can I use? What about an Allen key? That sounds like, feels like a good thing to poke into a device that's got mains inside of it. Here we go. Let's get some power. Eesh, oh well. Fan's powered up and the light's powered up. And there seems to be power on the hexapod as well. How do I tell if the computer is powered up? Oh no, it looks like it has. I can see a hard disk light flashing on the inside of the case. Let's spin it around. I have no idea how long it's gonna to take to power up. Now, of course, nowadays, you could do all of this on onboard processing on something like a Raspberry Pi or a, I don't know, something more powerful. But at the time, you know, 15 years ago, I needed a Pentium M processor to run this. So um, I'd love to see what you could do now with the processing power that's available. It looks like all the incandescent bulbs are still working. I'll get a close up of those in a minute. But more to the point is, is he gonna wake up? because theoretically, all I should have to do is look at him. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, I see, check that out. Um, I think I'm a bit, no, there we go, look at that. He's locked onto my face. How, oh my, I can't believe it. That's like, it's gotta be 10 years since this has powered up and it powers on first time. So you see he just moved his front leg, that's just a random twitch. People used to think, oh, it just took my photo. I know you heard that, but there's a little click and then the shutter went and it took my photo. I'm well chuffed. Hey buddy. 
Yeah, I took another photo and the shutter's still working. I can't tell if the zoom lens is working. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that it is because it looks like it's fixed at one focal length, but that is pretty cool for a 15 year old robot that's last powered up 10 years ago. I'm impressed. Now, of course, when I aim him at the camera, he's going to lose focus and eventually it will go to sleep. So if it doesn't see anyone for 30 seconds or so of looking around the room, it shuts itself down. Uh, but what I'll try and do is come the other side of the camera uh, and grab his attention. Here we go. Oh, yeah, you go. Look, it's locked onto me here. So if I move around behind the camera, it's still tracking me. Uh, yeah, there we go. And I'll try and get a little close up. Hello. That's cool. And then I'll just uh, we'll leave it for 30 seconds or so and hopefully it'll go back to sleep again. If not, I can't remember how to shut him down. Here we go, he's shutting down because he lost interest. There was no one to look at. I've got my laptop plugged into IC Hexpod down here via the Ethernet cable and I've downloaded and installed Tight VNC. So now I'm going to try and connect up. Okay, password. Um, let's try an obvious one. Bingo. There we go, we're in. Okay, so this is the uh, remote screen, the remote view of IC Hexapod. This is Windows XP. And right now I've got his face covered up so that he doesn't wake up. So we've got video frame started at 768 by 576, working frame 400 by 300, and we've got 15 frames a second. I think I used to get this at about 25 frames a second, so I don't know why that's uh, gone down a little bit there. Let's look at some of these tabs in the application. So the main tab just shows us various information here. Uh, there's a tracking tab, which is all about the tracking behavior. Goodness knows what half of this means anymore. Um, <laughs> behavior tab, this is to do with the runtime, the track area size, uh, reflex reactions, blink time, seven seconds. I don't know what that means. Wake on face detect, okay. Uh, there's a video tab a servo tab, a com tab, a file tab, and a mail tab. I think it used to send me mails after a, a day's work of how many uh, images it had taken. Uh, if I remove this monster mash card here from his face, hopefully we'll see him see my face and he'll wake up. Let's give it a go. Yep, there we go. You can see on there, there's a circle around the face that he's tracking. And sure enough, he is indeed following me around. Hello, and he just took my photograph there, so we'll have a look at that photo in a minute. Uh, show face track, oh, here we go, look at that. That's a better view. There's the face track view and it's in color. I'm assuming I don't usually show this information because it probably slows down the processor. In fact, the frames per seconds drop down to 10. You can probably see on the tracking screen is that is that horrible interlacing I never got rid of the interlacing on the camera when it panned left and right and that always left really horrible images if someone moved just as he took a picture. That eye has started working. The zoom lens on the eye is now working. I'm going to see if I can get a picture of that whilst it's going. Let's see if we can get it on this camera here. I wonder if this will show up. If you look down there and I come in closer, that zoom lens just moved. Now it's gone back, so it looks really deep in there now. And if I come in closer, it comes more towards the front. So that's great. The zoom lens is still working. It's really hard to perceive on camera, but from here, when the zoom lens adjusts, basically the little incandescent bulb that's right in the back of his head just sort of seems like it sinks right back into his body. So it's a really nice effect. Sleep now. Sleep now. No, it didn't really do much. Sleep now. There we go. He's shutting down. And let's just put that in front of him again so he doesn't wake up. What I thought I should do whilst we've got a connection to him is take a look uh, at the photographs that he's taken. Images, here we go. Um, so the first image was 2006 on the 12th of December. Let's have a look, it's probably me. Yep, it's whilst I was developing him. 
and it's a really grainy image of me up in my loft whilst working on the face tracking code. <laughs> that's, um, that's going back some time. Uh, down the bottom here, so this must be the most recent ones, which I was just doing a second ago. Let's have a little look. Yeah, there I am again, looking pretty miserable. <laughs> it seems to always get me uh, uh, looking my worst. There we go. So that was today. So the last time it was actually used was 2013. So I lied. It's not 10 years since it's been used. It's eight years since it's been it's been used, but still pretty impressive. And I'm trying to think now who this is it was some people who came to video the mantis and at the same time they recorded some icy hexapod stuff it was a film crew there are 30,000 face images in that directory goodness me that's not just the um, unique faces it's just how many pictures he's taken so it's probably the there's probably a thousand pictures of me in there whilst I was developing him but I need to get some footage of IC looking down the barrel of the lens, so I need to, a photograph really on the front of this phone so that he'll focus on the phone. Um, the only one I could think I had on me was this one, so uh, let's see if it works. Let's see if I can wake him up first. Well, it seems to have woken with a picture of the Queen. How am I going to do this? I want that there, and then no, stop looking at me. No, not me. Look at the Queen. He's more interested in me than he is the Queen, unfortunately. Here we go. Let's try that. No, look over here. One of the reasons why I see struggles so much with small images like these photographs, it thinks that the face being so small is very far away from him. So it's like me being over here somewhere, but actually it's quite close. So what happens then is being a long way away, it zooms in, but then the tuning for the tracking overshoots all the time because it's being fooled thinking there's a face over there. So the tuning turns down so it can track, but actually it's right here. So then, IC shoots past the target and loses it and keeps going back and forwards. So it does get kind of confused with smaller images because it's been designed to work on a normal size face like this one. It's really interesting when I took IC Hexapod to meet the public to see how they engage with him because a lot of people would assume that he was more alive than he was. Like for example, when I get close towards him, he backs away and when I move away from him, he comes towards me. And that's just purely because he's trying to fit the video frame of my head into the frame itself before he loses me. And little twitches of the leg sometimes just happen to tie in with a, with a person moving towards him and they think he's afraid like that. So people started to put more personality into him than I'd ever programmed. Making eye contact's a huge thing, and so just being able to do that really sells uh, how, how alive something is. It's something in animatronics that we strive for, to try and keep eye contact with a puppet and, and an actor, let's say. It's very difficult to do, but not so bad for a computer. Well, I've got to say I'm really pleased that uh, IC Hexpod still works after all these years and it's been really good fun actually showing you how it works because it's something I've never done at this point. Um, there are some things that I never quite finished, like I wanted to add the ability for him to hear so you could grab his attention when he couldn't see you when you were outside of his uh, field of view. Uh, but maybe that's something for the future. And I might actually fit uh, a quieter fan because that one's really noisy. But anyway, that's it. That's the end of this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section below. And maybe I'll do a history of hexapods and the very first one to the mantis. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye.